I'm sure your family's just like um, ours, our, our wider family. There are certain stories that um, have become legends and get repeated again and again. Like the time uh, when I was a, a child and we visited the, the vet, my father and sister and uh, myself and our dog. And the vet came out and asked my father, name please. And he said, Snoopy. That gets uh, repeated ad nauseum, really. And it doesn't matter how many times it gets repeated. It always gets a, a laugh. I wonder if I was to ask you your, who you are, I wonder what answer you would give. The whole, um, the whole area of our identity seems to have become quite a, a sort of growth industry in Christian teaching and Christian circles in the, the last um, number of years. And that's good. It's important that we really know who we are. It's important that we are sure of our identity in, in Christ. And um, I was thinking earlier today of the temptation stories and some of the identities that Satan seems to uh, offer to us. Uh, thinking of how he tempted Jesus. Uh, command these stones to become bread. It's it's easy for us to think our identity lies in, in what we do. And then the temptation to throw himself down from a high place and the angels would swoop in and he would be rescued and uh, the whole world would fall at his feet. It's easy to think our identity is what other people make of us or think of us. And then, of course, he's, uh, Satan offers Jesus all the kingdoms of the world, their wealth, their glory. It's easy to think that um, our identity lies in what we possess or how much uh, power we maybe have over uh, other people or, or whatever. And, of course, for Jesus, his identity didn't come from any of these things, his identity was that he was the beloved of the Father, just as uh, the Father had announced um, at his baptism. As Christians, we are in Christ, and we share in his belovedness. Who are we? We are the beloved of God. That's the wonder of grace. We're not just saved from our sins and from hell and from a lost eternity. We're saved into something. We're saved into the belovedness of Jesus, so that the Father says over us what he says over him. Uh, he never says over Jesus, you're a disappointment to me, so you'll not say it over us. He never says over Jesus, Jesus, I wish you'd had a, a different personality from the one you've got, so he doesn't say it over us either. What he says over us is what he says over Jesus. You're my beloved son, you're my beloved daughter, and you bring me great joy. However, we need to make sure we handle that uh, truth of our identity in the right way. Um, it's easy for us to handle it the, the wrong way and to demand that everybody treats us as the beloved of God, as we deserve to be treated, as it were. Paul was beloved in Christ but he was treated as the off-scouring of the earth. But it didn't make him bitter. I think we need to handle this business of who we are in terms of remembering whose we are. We belong to God the Father. We're his beloved. So don't go around demanding that everybody treats you properly. If they do, it's a, a bonus. But don't make your happiness dependent on people seeing who you really are, the, the, the chosen and accepted and precious beloved of God. And, and don't make your happiness dependent on them treating you accordingly. Sometimes they may, and sometimes they may not. The important thing is, along with who you are, remember whose you are. I hope that before you go to bed tonight, you might say, Abba, 
I belong to you. Let your peace be over me to shelter me. Let your peace be under me to uphold me. Let your peace be around me to protect me. Let your peace be behind me and ahead of me to guide me. Abba, I belong to you. Thank you, Father.